Welcome to Review Central. This is DOST reviewer number 4, featuring questions in mathematics. This reviewer is intended for those who are eyeing, or are set to take, the DOST scholarship qualifying exam. There are 10 questions featured on this reviewer. All questions are modeled on actual questions that appeared on previous DOST qualifying exams. Before we proceed, don't forget to subscribe to Review Central and click or press the bell button to make sure you get notified whenever we post a new reviewer or other review materials on this channel. Now let's begin. Math question number one. While in Buggio, Aloisa went to the Good Shepherd to buy a snack which is a mixture of peanuts and green peas. The peanuts and green peas are being sold there for 50 centavos per 10 grams, and 80 centavos per 10 grams, respectively. If she wants a kilogram of the snack for 62 pesos, what must be the composition of the mixture? A. Peanuts, 500 grams, green peas, 500 grams. B. Peanuts, 550 grams, green peas, 450 grams. C. Peanuts, 600 grams, green peas, 400 grams. D. Peanuts, 650 grams, green peas, 350 grams. The correct answer is C. Peanuts, 600 grams, green peas, 400 grams. Let X equals grams of peanuts and Y equals grams of green peas. Grams of peanuts plus grams of green peas equal 1 kilogram or 1000 grams. We can express this in equation form as, x plus y equals 1000. Expressed in terms of y, we get, y equals 1000 minus x. Let's label this as equation 1. Peanuts cost 50 centavos per 10 grams, green peas cost 80 centavos per 10 grams, and Aloisa wants a kilogram of both for a specific fixed cost of 62 pesos. We can express this in equation form as, 0.5x over 10, plus 0.8y over 10, equals 62. Simplifying we should arrive at, 0.05x, plus 0.08y, equals 62. Let's label this as equation 2. Substituting equation 1 into equation 2. From the resulting equation we can already solve for x, and arrive at x equals 600. That's 600 grams of peanuts. Substituting x value into equation 1. This time we compute for the value of y. We should quickly arrive at y equals 400. That's 400 grams of green peas. Hence, the correct answer is C. Math question number 2. Bird is making a triangular wall with building blocks. The top row has 3 blocks, the second row has 5, and the third has 7, and so on. How many rows can you make with a set of 120 blocks? A. 10 B. 11 C. 12 D. 13 The correct answer is A. 10. This is actually a number sequence problem. The sequence defined in the problem is 3, 5, 7, and so on. From the first three terms of the sequence we should quickly recognize this to be a simple arithmetic sequence. An arithmetic sequence is a number sequence where each term increases or decreases by adding or subtracting some constant number. The question, how many rows can Bert make with a set of 120 blocks can be translated as, how many terms does the arithmetic sequence have if the sum of the sequence is 120? Recall your formula in solving for the sum of an arithmetic sequence. The sum of an arithmetic sequence with n terms is equal to, n over 2, times the quantity 2a1, plus the quantity n minus 1, times d. Where? Sn is the sum of the arithmetic sequence. This is given as 120. n is the number of terms of the arithmetic sequence. This is the value we are looking for. a1 is the first term of the sequence. We know this to be 3. D is the constant number that is added to or subtracted from each term to come up with the next. We should quickly figure it out to be 2, that is, 3 plus 2 equals 5, 5 plus 2 equals 7, and so on. So the only unknown value in our equation is n, which is exactly the value we are looking for. 
From here it's just a matter of plugging in the given and derived values and proceed to solve for n. At some point we'll arrive at a quadratic equation, n squared plus 2 n equals 120. The next step is to factor the quadratic equation. Because it is a quadratic equation we'll arrive at two values of x, which are 10 and minus 12. We can disregard the negative value as it is nonsensical and irrelevant to our problem. Therefore, our correct and final answer is 10. Burke can make a triangular wall with 10 rows from the given set of 120 blocks. Math question number 3. Assume that a plus b equals minus 3. If the line given by ax plus by equals 18, passes through the point, x equals minus 1 and y equals 2, what is the value of a and b? a equals minus 7 and b equals 4. b a equals minus 8 and b equals 5. c a equals minus 9 and b equals 6. d a equals minus 10 and b equals 7. The correct answer is b, a equals minus 8 and b equals 5. Let's label the first given equation as equation 1. Next, let's substitute the given coordinates to the x and y variables in the second equation, since it is stated that the line given by the second equation passes through the set point. Let's label the resulting equation as equation 2. Next, we can add equations 1 and 2 to eliminate a. We can already solve for b and should arrive at, b equals 5. Finally, we substitute our computed value of b into either equation 1 or equation 2. Equation 1 looks much simpler so let's use it. We should quickly solve a to be minus 8. Math question number 4. A committee of 10 students must select a president, a vice president, a secretary, and a treasurer. In how many possible ways can this be done? A. 10 B. 210 C. 720 D. 5040 The correct answer is D. 5040. This is a problem involving permutations. Permutations are the arrangement of elements in a definite order. The permutation formula, sometimes referred to as NPR formula, because of the way it is commonly written, or PNR formula, that is P given N and R, is used to find the number of ways in which our different things can be selected and arranged out of N different things. The permutation formula is as shown. Now to our solution to this problem. This is actually a very simple and straightforward permutations problem. All we need to do is correctly identify N and R from the given information in the question. There's a committee of 10 students and it is implied that they are to select officers among themselves. From here we can derive N to be 10. They are to select a president, a vice president, a secretary, and a treasurer. So there are four positions. This is our R. Plugging in our N and our values into our permutation formula, we should quickly arrive at 5040 as the correct and final answer. In other words, there are 5040 different ways to select four positions from a committee of 10 students. Math question number 5. Which of the following propositional forms may represent the proposition below? If the diagonals of a quadrilateral bisect each other and they are perpendicular, then the quadrilateral is a rhombus. The correct answer is A. Let's do a quick review of mathematical propositions. We usually use the letters P, Q, and R to represent propositions. This can be compared to using variables X, Y, and Z to denote real numbers. Since the truth values of P, Q, and R vary, they are called propositional variables. A proposition has only two possible values, it is either true or false. Back to our problem. From our given proposition statement, we can designate the first part, that is, that the diagonals of a quadrilateral bisect each other, as P. 
The second part of the proposition, that the diagonals of a quadrilateral are perpendicular, is Q. Lastly, the last part, the quadrilateral is a rhombus, is RR. Before we proceed, we can quickly eliminate answer choices that are obviously wrong because they don't make sense. Answer choices B and D can be eliminated because the placements of their parentheses are obviously wrong and do not make sense. Moving on, we are now left with answer choices A and C. Answer choice A uses the operation symbol, and, while answer choice C uses the operation symbol, or. We can read A as, B and Q results to R. And C as, P or Q results to R. From our given proposition statement we should quickly see that and is used instead of OR. The correct answer must have the operator and instead of OR. This means that both P and Q must be true in order for R to be true. That is, the diagonals of a quadrilateral must bisect each other, and they must also be perpendicular, for us to conclude that the quadrilateral is a rhombus. Math question number 6. What is the domain of the function defined by, f of x equals the square root of the quantity x squared minus 1? The correct answer is a. Step 1, let's factor the right side of the equation denoting f of x. We should end up with, x minus 1, times x plus 1, is greater or equal to 0. Step 2, tabulate the possible resulting values from the factors we derived. We've done the tabulation for you, as follows. From the table above, we can see that for any values less than or equal to minus 1, and greater than or equal to 1, f of x is non-negative. Thus, the solution is denoted by the domain notation as shown in answer choice A. Math question number 7. If x, y, and z are sides of a triangle, and x equals 13 and y equals 17, which of the following numbers is a possible value of z? A. 29 B. 31 C. 33 D. 35 The correct answer is A. 29. In Euclidean geometry, the triangle inequality theorem states that the sum of any two sides of a triangle is greater than the third side. Going back to our given problem. By the triangle inequality theorem, we have the following inequalities for the sides. 13 plus 17 should be greater than Z. Therefore, 30 is greater than z, or z is less than 30. z plus 13 should be greater than 17. Therefore, z is greater than 4. Also, z plus 17 should be greater than 13. Therefore, z is greater than minus 4. But we already know this since z is greater than 4. From the inequalities, the only possible values for z are between 4 and 30. Among the answer choices, only 29 falls within this range, so only 29 is a possible value of C. Math question number 8. If sine beta equals minus 3 over 5, and tangent beta is greater than 0, what is the exact value of cosine squared beta minus sine squared beta? A. Minus 1 fifth. B. 7 over 25. C1. D minus 1. The correct answer is B, 7 over 25. Sine beta is given to be minus 3 over 5. It is obviously from our classic 3, 4, 5 right triangle, with beta as one of its angles. But the given value of sine beta is negative, which means that we need to determine first, in which quadrant in the Cartesian plane it is located. Let's do a quick review on how to determine the correct quadrant based on whether a trigonometric ratio is positive or negative. Here's a handy cheat chart for you. From our chart, sine is negative at quadrants 3 and 4, that is, when y is negative. 
tangent is positive, that is, greater than 0, at quadrants 1 and 3. Therefore, beta must be in the third quadrant. Now let's find the value of cosine beta. This time let's quickly review our Sokotoa rule in trigonometry. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, which is 4 over 5. But remember that beta is on the third quadrant, where cosine is also negative. Therefore, cosine beta is minus 4 over 5. Lastly, we can now substitute the sine beta and cosine beta values in the expression, cosine squared beta minus sine squared beta, and quickly arrive at 7 over 25 is the correct and final answer. Math question number 9. Barbie invested 80,000 pesos into a venture that pays 3.5% annual simple interest. How much will she earn after a year? A. 2,800 pesos B. 28,000 pesos C. 82,000 pesos D. 108,000 pesos The correct answer is A. 2,800 pesos. This is a very simple business math problem involving simple interest. Recall your simple interest formula. Simple interest, I, equals PRT. Where P is the principal or amount invested, which is given as 80,000 pesos. R is the interest rate which is 3.5%, or 0.035 in decimal form. T is the time amount is invested, in years. This is also given. Plugging in the given values we should quickly arrive at 2,800 pesos as the amount Barbie will earn after a year. Math question number 10. Which of the following defines a 1 to 1 function? A. f of x equals 3x squared minus 1. B. f of x equals x squared plus x plus 1. C. f of x equals 5 times the absolute value of x. D. f of x equals 1 half x plus 3. The correct answer is D. 1 half x plus 3. Recall that to determine if a function is 1 to 1, we can use the horizontal line test. The horizontal line test checks if a function is 1 to 1. A 1 to 1 function has only one x value for each y value. If a horizontal line passes through a graph more than once, the function can't be 1 to 1. So let's go ahead and apply the horizontal line test on each of the given functions and the answer choices. Take note that to use the horizontal line test, you will necessarily have to draw the graph of our given functions, so make sure to brush up on your function graphing skills. But for this problem we did all the graphing for you, so don't worry about it for now. Here's the graph for the function and answer choice A. The function and answer choice A definitely fails the horizontal line test as you can see. And here's the graph of the function and answer choice B. This function likewise definitely fails the horizontal line test. Let's proceed to the function and answer choice C. Here is its graph. This function also fails the horizontal line test. Finally, here's the graph of the function and answer choice D. As you can see, among the answer choices, the function in D is the only one that passes the horizontal line test, which means that it is a one-to-one -one function. Sketching the graphs of functions to do the horizontal line test is very tedious, and if you are in a time-bound, high-pressure exam, you would like to be able to answer questions like this much faster, wouldn't you? Let's give you a handy and very quick shortcut that avoids having to do the graphing altogether. First, only linear functions can be one-to-one. -one. It is because linear functions have a straight-line graph. How do you distinguish non-linear functions? Easy. If the exponent is more than one, it is automatically not a linear function. In our given question, two of the answer choices have exponents of two, which means that these are quadratic functions whose graphs are not straight lines. Important note, take note, however, that not all linear functions will automatically pass the horizontal line test. A linear function whose graph is a horizontal line will, of course, fail the horizontal line test. 
Second, if you see a function that has the absolute value symbol, then it is most likely not a one-to-one -one function. In our given question, answer choice C has the absolute value symbol. Any value inside the absolute value sign can either be positive or negative, which means that it always has two possible values. That's why in our graph for the function in answer choice C, we have two straight lines that form a V. It is, of course, not a one-to-one -one function. To summarize, if we are looking for a one-to-one -one function, we can quickly identify and eliminate the ones that are not, by simply finding functions with exponents greater than 1 and or functions that have the absolute symbol sign. Our function in answer choice D is neither of this, and that's why it is the correct answer. A very useful shortcut, right? You have just completed DOST reviewer number 4, which featured questions in mathematics. If you wish to watch more DOST reviewers in mathematics, check out our DOST mathematics playlist. Check out also our other DOST playlists for other reviewer topics. If you haven't done so yet, please don't forget to subscribe to Review Central and click or press the bell button to make sure you get notified whenever we post a new reviewer or other review materials on this channel. Please like if you find this video useful, and feel free to share it to anyone who may also benefit from it. We wish you all the best on your forthcoming DOST scholarship qualifying exam.